Chapter 207, Organization Lillian paid no mind to Madame Magician's usual playful jabs and instead focused on her account of the evil god's infiltration. It aligned with the information shared by the late Hammerite. For unrecognized evil gods hailing from other realms, providing godhood boons proved to be an arduous task. Numerous obstacles hindered their progress. They had to rely on covert followers to perform elaborate rituals on a grand scale, which often drew attention and resulted in swift annihilation before they could infiltrate. Madame Magician painstakingly detailed various examples, showcasing the immense difficulty angelic entities face when descending into the mortal plane. In recent years, there have been only five instances, with four failures and one partial success. While gaining a measure of godhood without reaching angelic status seemed somewhat easier, such cases were rare and generally unsuccessful. Though Madame Magician didn't explicitly mention it, Lumian suspected that the Great Mother, the Mother Tree of Desire, and the Enigmatic Fog possessed extraordinary infiltration capabilities, surpassing other entities based on Hammerite. It seemed likely that these three were responsible for most successful instances involving the acquisition of godhood powers. Does Madame Magician remain unaware, or does she deem it unnecessary for me to know at this stage? Lumian pondered momentarily, inclined to believe the latter. He continued perusing Madame Magician's response. This actually, this actually bodes, bodes well. well. Dealing, Dealing with, with an angel who serves a hidden entity is much simpler than confronting angelic powers, powers derived from said hidden entity. entity. The associated risks are also significantly reduced. Once, Once you ascend, ascend to the rank of an angel and extract powers of equal magnitude from that fellow with the long name, thereby rendering him exceedingly vulnerable, you can implore my lord to undo the seal and set him free. Then you can give him a thorough thrashing and either transform him into a sealed artifact or restore him to his original Beyonder characteristics. Naturally, this hinges upon him truly being an angelic entity, and not a puppet blessed with a boon. Puppets are easier to handle. Once you extract a certain measure of his power, he will crumble. However, the remaining power bearing the mark of the hidden entity is what presents a greater challenge. You must maintain the seal and gradually absorb it until it reaches a level manageable by an angel. Doesn't, Doesn't it all seem, seem to be progressing, progressing smoothly, smoothly with a high likelihood of success? Ah, but the, the most, most vexing and formidable step lies in becoming an angel. In your present state, I lack confidence. Were it not for the uniqueness of the current era, 99% or more of the Beyonders would never come close to touching Godhood. I believe your psychiatrist has already enlightened you on how to evade the negative effects of Termiboros. No further elaboration is necessary. I simply wish to remind you that should you undertake any critical or perilous endeavors in the future, do write to me beforehand and apprise me of the situation. Why do I suggest you write before exploding that lengthy named fellow? Because you might be clandestinely influenced and neglect the corresponding dangers, forgetting to notify me. As for Termi Boros, he will not let you forget my warning for it would mean you engaging in numerous hazardous exploits and facing a high risk of losing your life. That is clearly not what he desires or strives for. If you were to perish, the seal would be affected, but my lord would be alerted. In that event, I shall gather a team to reinforce the seal and eliminate him. With such a skilled angel of fate sealed within you, your future is destined to be quite exciting. Praise the lord. You are akin to bait for the followers of evil gods, hunters, and demonesses. You shall embark on a multitude of experiences. If you find the time and inclination, do consider writing a lengthy letter to share with me. And now, with the assistance of the two psychiatrists, you can express your desire to alter your faith to Mr. K during a forthcoming gathering. Remember, before you set off to attend the event, offer prayers to my Lord for the angel's protection. Lumian read the note patiently, finding Madame Magician's words both abundant and yet empty. The most valuable part was her guidance on evading Termiboros's influence, and the reminder to seek her opinion before utilizing the angel's power. Additionally, she provided a beautifully drawn blueprint that offered a chance to address the corruption within his body at the angelic level. Lumian burned the note by rubbing his spirituality. 
He then reached into his pockets, touching the hidden banknotes and coins, before leaving room 207 and making his way to room 305. Anthony Reed had already returned to his lodgings and sat by the bedside, dressed as a clerk. Observing Lumion unlatch the door and enter, he offered a simple explanation. I couldn't find the target at the back entrance of 126 Avenue du Marché. However, I recently discovered that he had already left through the main door, with you following him. Lumion produced 400 Vaudois worth of banknotes and handed them over to Anthony Reed. At the same time, he nodded slightly and stated, The commission is over. It seems you've already encountered the target. Anthony Reed chuckled. Taking a moment to consider, he inquired, Can I report the target's information to the authorities? Wait for a week, Lumion replied. He had initially planned to offer Anthony Reed more money to delay claiming the reward from the wanted poster. However, since he sought his opinion, Lumion took advantage of the situation by setting a time limit. He worried that any investigation or arrest related to Louis Lunn might alert Madame Hualis, potentially jeopardizing their meeting. Anthony Reed did not object and let out a sigh. You are more suited for the market district than I initially thought. He had never witnessed a wanted criminal rise to become a leader of a sizable mob so swiftly without being detected by the authorities. Competent individuals can thrive anywhere. Just like you, Lumion advised Anthony Reed, casting a casual glance around room 305. His eyes fell upon a few folded papers on the wooden table near the window. They appeared thicker and smoother, larger than ordinary oil paintings. What could they be? Lumion focused his gaze for a moment, realizing that the folded papers had a faint bluish hue and a printed texture. Instantly, the pieces fell into place. The posters on the wall. Posters of parliamentary candidates have been plastered all over the place recently. You seem particularly invested in the national convention election. Lumian didn't hold back his speculation as he taunted Anthony Reed. Do you have a legitimate occupation? One of the fundamental eligibility criteria for the elections. Anthony Reed calmly smiled and replied, No. He did not elaborate on his reasons for collecting the parliamentary candidates' posters. Another commission. Lumion decided not to delve deeper. He waved his hand dismissively and left room 305. Amidst the lunatic's piercing cries, Lumion descended the stairs, left Alberge du Coq d'Ore, returned to Salle de Balbris, and settled at the bar counter. Good evening, boss. The bartender greeted with deference, straightening his posture. Lumion nodded. Give me a glass of absinthe. Having thought about Cordu too often that day, he needed a dose of psychedelic bitterness to jolt his senses awake. On the stage, Jenna performed with exaggerated flair, belting out flashy songs. Leaning against the bar counter, Lumion let his gaze wander as he absorbed every note. Now and then, he would take a sip of the dreamy green liquid, allowing its bitterness to awaken his nerves. Once he regained composure, he organized the recent matters he had to attend to. First, there was Mr. K's mission. Second, the looming threat from the poison spur mob. Third, Susanna Matisse's second assault. And fourth, his upcoming meeting with Madame Poilis. Regarding the election, Lumion didn't pay him much mind after confirming from Franca that the Savoy mob also backed Hugues Artois. This meant that even if the opposing party won, it wouldn't entirely suppress the Savoy mob or impede his mission. Susanna Matisse's resurgence had been a cause for concern. But thanks to the psychiatric treatment, Lumion wouldn't hesitate to seek assistance from Franca. Resolving this matter had become relatively manageable. Once official beyonders committed to the task, they wouldn't be inferior to Lumion, a sequence 8, in effectiveness. They would undoubtedly uncover Monstro Ives' issues and the troubles at Theatre de l'Ancien Cage of Pigeons, purging Susanna Matisse's evil spirit completely. This would be accomplished within the next few days. Lumion simply needed to remain vigilant. Mr. K's mission was rather complex, relying on Gardner Martin. Lumion, not being a spectator beyonder, could only attempt to gain the target's approval through repeated efforts. There were no shortcuts for the time being, so rushing was unnecessary. Similarly, he had to await Madame Hualis's response. 
Lumian couldn't rush the matter even if he desired to. Upon analyzing the situation, Lumian concluded that he needed to prioritize dealing with the poison spur mob's threat. After the election, Black Scorpion Roger would receive an additional boon from Madame Moon, ascending to the rank of a sower. Baldi Harmon and short-legged candlestick Castina might even advance to the level of heretic spellmasters. At that point, Lumian, their primary target, would be defenseless against them. Even with the support of Franca, Baron Brignes, and his allies, the situation would be perilous. Should I join forces with Franca before the election concludes and infiltrate 126 Avenue du Marché under the cover of darkness to eliminate the remaining members of the poison spur mob? Even if Madame Moon sends reinforcements later, by the time they stabilize the situation, I would have earned the boss's trust and gained a chance to partially withdraw from the market district. The problem lies in facing a heretic spellmaster on their home turf. Even with Franca and me united, defeating him would be a daunting task, not to mention his potential allies. Perhaps an opportunity will arise to strike at Bali Harmon and short-legged candlestick Castina when they are outside. Lumion pondered as he spotted Charlie, attired as a waiter, approaching the bar counter with a tray. Nodding and greeting, Lumion instinctively honed in on Charlie's luck. In an instant, his grasp on the absinthe glass tightened and his pupils dilated. He saw Charlie's luck stained with blood, a swirling blend of crimson and ebony that sent a shiver down his spine. This could only mean that Charlie was on the brink of a life-threatening catastrophe within the next two to three days, or perhaps even within the next 24 hours.